ousting takes effort, the occupier of your life must be thrown out. But that doesn't happen as long as you all are. Dang crickets. That's you, not responding to the harm and the threats against you, making excuses. Say this every week. Don't know what else to say? It's what's happening. And we watch our destruction. We watch our way of life being turned, and everyone complains about how it's not going the right direction, and no one lifts a finger to do anything about it. And I come here every week to tell you there's things you can do about it, given you want to make it that important to take responsibility, and stop making excuses. I don't know what else to say. I just, I, if I wish everyone just understood what I just meant, what I just said right there would be enough. And it just doesn't seem to be. So I keep coming back and keep beating my head against this wall, which causes me to think, how, how sane am I? Notwithstanding all the right I'm saying and doing and exampling and trying to be, we have some serious trouble and there's nobody going to oust the occupiers but us. It was up to us to keep these people from attacking us. And it means everybody who has a sense of freedom or sense of, of uh, property uh, in themselves even, or a sense of self-determination. It, it can be so shown in so many ways what the problem is, and we don't respond. And we tend to, it, it's just amazing to watch us tend to, to opt for things that really don't, aren't the way they are. I don't, I don't understand why we even do this. But I've offered ways to go about this and what to look for. I told you a long time ago, it just didn't occur to me just when I started broadcasting. Going on 10 years now or, or whatever. It was uh, way back, late 90s. That we were going to have to come up, you know, it was going to get so stupid that we were going to have to start making laws on what reasonable ones, what normal would actually be. Not 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 normal, the new normal, but the one that principled normal. Otherwise, there was going to be a sweeping of all these information, all this stuff away. And then they went and done 9-11, and that caused everyone to go in panicky. Uh, I went to looking like a terrorist, because I figured I might as well look the part if they're going to presume me the part, and that gives me a little bit of an angle as well. Another, it hasn't really worked out because I, since I've, then I've also learned how to avoid these jerks, but still work against them. As I keep telling you, you do things that you, you know, this is, this is a battle. This is a real battle. The battlefield is kind of a, uh, what can I say? It's, it's kind of an obtuse place. It's just abstract, but it's not because it, it deals with you. It deals with what your life is. And yet it's dealt with in a, I can use the term straw man. It's a straw condition. You're the agent to everything that goes on around you relative to the current uh, government. Governance is what it is. It's not really a government. And so anybody who complains about the government doesn't understand it. And that's, so Again, it doesn't take but few moments for me to figure out someone has, doesn't, under, doesn't understand something and they're talking more than they actually understand about certain things. And then I start listening whether or not I can offer something to help straighten that up so that we all can start getting into the same the same thought about what's going on instead of all these disparaging thoughts, which keep us divided, and that's part of the key. So I've offered different, tried to offer insights. A lot of you, not you, the ones listening, because you're still listening, but a lot of you come and go, the ones that won't hear this now, either don't show up or come and go and don't don't understand that this is a long-term thing behind a woodshed. And uh, it doesn't fit your sensationalism fancy, it doesn't fit some of the world that you've understood, and it definitely asks you to do something. In other words, don't come behind the woodshed for me to give you a whoop-ass. No, you're going to come here to learn how you give someone else the whoop-ass when they come trespass against you. And a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of people that don't care that they're being trespassed against on many levels. And anyway, so I bring up ideas on what I saw a long time ago was coming, and it's kind of come on to us pretty well. I haven't been surprised. I don't, I don't think anybody's listening to me can hear that I've been surprised, actually surprised at the way we're going. And I don't mean that as just a, oh, well, we'll just give in to it. I mean as a, almost a predictive thing. And I tell you, it's not predictive more than it was already in the law. When I, this uh, so-called Agenda 21 that was being denied up until just a few years ago, it's been in the laws of your local jurisdiction since the 80s. 
that's how I even identified it, folks. This is not, not just since, oh, I just learned the latest thing here, and I'm going to tell you, just parrot all this information. No, this has been a long-term overthrow. And we were supposed to push back, and we the people never did. But anyway, so we're in the middle of this battle, and there's things going on. And I still say, well, if we got our heads together, we could actually come up with counters. One of the counters of which would be like make legislation that makes principles normal and not let these lunatics get loose and not let them displace us. And an opportunity may be coming up here uh, in, in Oregon for that. Now, I'm talking to those of you uh, that want to support cannabis but really don't stand up. you got a couple of guys, a couple people send me emails says you're going to stand up, and you did. Write your comments, monitoring the... Uh, the uh, the international discussion, I haven't even really looked at that anymore. I've been so busy. And anybody that's on a uh, uh, on an email that I haven't sent back a response, I'm sorry. I've just been too too busy. I can't focus. I like to give you, I like to give quality time to what emails I do send, and I haven't been able to focus on those. So I got a few that I do have to respond to. And before I forget, if I didn't, I don't remember now if I did. This is past cast, postcast, whatever cast you want to look at, listen to. This will be BTW RLM three one one for the links if you want to go start picking up on this stuff and get a get dog on the hunt, you get the scent and, get, and can track down things that I may talk about that interest you, either by picking up the facts that you can pick up to add to more work that you're doing or uh, develop a, a strategy on encountering it or developing a place to be instead of just excusing it away. But uh, I always try to pull stuff together as I see it, and look for the inroads. The, the, uh, this is a battle, so we're looking at ways to how do we minimize, uh, minimize harm to us, but also take down the other side and, and hopefully actually take advantage of what was the principles that got us here that were the good principles. And they, there is a, there's a thread of how this is supposed to work, and, and it's just not, and I don't understand why people don't focus on that and find the people who are obstructing that as the occupiers that they are, whether we want to put that in the context of an occupier, a criminal, a fiduciary breach. As I said last week, I titled the broadcast Fiduciary Breaches, or not Saggy Drawers. There's there's a thing here that has to be going on. It's just not, not just a statement, and we go away. So, Oregon Bill would create banking alternative for cannabis industry. Caught my eye. Don't know anything about it. No, I didn't go read the bill. Because my view on this is that whoever's bringing this forward is probably going to be in a mindset of government. And it's not going to go the way we the people need. Yet here is the evidence that something could be made in the law, which actually could work for us, if we were to assert, get interested in this, and, and assert this, whether it be in Oregon or any other state with a cannabis industry. Why? Because the big problem is, and until we get this other one fixed, those of you on cannabis get it fixed on the FDA side, and the and what was the other agency that's there that regulate this Schedule One nonsense, they get it descheduled completely, and then you so then you get rid of the legalization, you get rid of the implied illegality of the stuff only under regulation, and uh, Oregon Bill would create a banking industry alternative for the cannabis. So I'd look at, well, it's not, how are you going to make an alternative? It's in the state, and we have this other three or four chains we put to the federal government. You're never going to get away from this thing. And so something's wrong here. And yet here, here's the advantage I think we see. A bill was filed in Oregon House would establish limited state chartered banks to serve the cannabis industry. Now, certainly someone from the government wrote that, because when you go read what it does, what it serves is the state. In other words, what this bill does is it sets up a conduit, a, a, a revenue conduit, so the state makes sure it gets its stuff, its revenue. Everybody else, not so much. So you got to go read for that. There's only four points to the whole bill, but it just doesn't do anything. But let's focus on this alternative. Remember I told you we live in the alternative world. This is just this is the alternative dispute resolution. Let's just offer this alternative and see what flies. My observation here is, why don't we offer the right alternative? And I don't mean just in Oregon. I mean, look around. Look around for places to do this. Be the people that step up with the mind and the intelligence and the backing and the understanding of this, this thing that has to be done. And bring us to a principled place where 
We literally make what I told you last week. You become the exclusion. You make an exclusion condition. And I think there's a way to do it. And all of you in freedom and, 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 and specie and lawful money and all that, this is all for you guys. All production, this is all for you guys. And this touches a little bit about what my hope was when I, I researched why a mining district would be viable in, other, in, in order to give us a toehold, even at least, back into something that was predates all this nonsense. It actually predates Lincoln's imposition and his failure to end the Civil War. It predates uh, the recent overthrow of the Bar Association in your states, becoming a, a private organization, public-private partnership in your government. And uh, that's why the mining law became very important as well, because you have rights relating back to that time that, that can't be interfered with by the relation back doctrine. And so there's a ton that I'm looking at as I'm coming up into this, and I'm saying, you know, this mining district, they, they, they literally the money is in the bank for a miner. It's in the bank, the gold. That's the gold of species. It's not the coin uh, that I'm more dealing with at this point. It's the substance. It's the stuff that you get out. Well, what do you? how do you get that? Do you spend fiat in order to get that? Well, no, you just go work. See, it's about work. A man's life, a woman's life is expended in the in the collection of this metal, be it silver or gold or any other any other metal. And those those are based those uh, those are the property that property itself the gold itself is a property, but that it comes from a property that's granted to the grantee, and that's a whole other study of law which is just fascinating and it just gave it becomes this thing I tell you is the distinction. It's the exclusion. It's the exclusion that. As we talked last week, the tertiary industry cannot touch. And your government sits in tertiary industry. But for the primary industry, all this stuff you see in the world as far as legalism doesn't exist. It's a parasite from this. Now, there's good reasons maybe why it all exists, but I'm just saying miners had their own mining districts, had their own governments. They didn't need, they didn't need a tertiary industry to have their own law. They're twice removed and prior to tertiary government that puts down all this uh, legalism on you now, from which the Bar Association rises up and causes governance on you today. The Oregon bill would create a banking alternative. When you go read this bill, and I won't, I guess I could read, but you go read through the bill. I think you, you need to read through the bill just to see how they're trying to set this thing up. It's a couple Democrats. Now, I don't like to be prejudicial up front, but I figured, well, if it's two Democrats doing it, and I, it's going to go to the state, and what's going to do? It's going to do uh, funding streams which they're going to set up from from somebody, from some producer, to feed themselves and their their um, the stakeholders, the leverage funding schemes that they all develop from inside now. I said this is going to this is another route. This is a this is going to be a setup for the state to get theirs, and sure enough, you'll find that's exactly what it does. But this whole dynamic is set up because the federal government makes cannabis or marijuana, whatever you want to call it, illegal. Anything that their little test or chemical test will say is marijuana is what, what it is, not what you call it or what we want to, we, we, the semantics we want to bring to it. They don't care about all that when they're looking for you to be carrying contraband against the king. I mean, it's pretty simple. And this is partly why that's happening as well. But this di the, 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 the conundrum between how a federal government can cause it to be illegal, illegalize it, and a state can make it legal, and then we have this battle. It's a very interesting thing, and I've always also said you find you find where two people are fighting against each other, and you'll find ways to get at them. Because while they're fighting each other, you go either find what shouldn't be a fight, or you fit inside and you're missed as you move through as they fight each other. And so this is a another one of the tactics that you bring in for the, building your strategies on how to address this. But the alternative to uh, to banking, you know, I was almost thinking, I was hoping before I read the article. I was seeing that the one in my mind was made up. And going back to the mining district, miners have the gold. They're a producer. They get it by grant. They do it by work. They have the right to give the product up by work to grant, not as a trade in commerce, but as a production grant to another producer. And uh, so I noticed this a long time ago. And it, within the mining uh, miners, I said, well, we can, we can make become this entity that would be able to bring, if you will, bring it back into vogue, the use of silver silver coins. If, if not coin, because you're not minting the coin, although you could mint a coin thing, th there's semantics you have to be careful of. You would just mint something that's uh, guaranteed and certified to be a certain, pr a certain purity, 
that everybody recognizes on its face what it is, and then becomes, it then just puts it back into habit that it's something that you can use in your medium of commerce between people. Not with the government, but, but between what people need. We get back into using what's considered lawful money. Now, where is that? That's already written. We don't have to worry about all this. This is not, a, not even, this is an academic discussion. Even not that, this is a new law. So, you know, the, the law that everyone abandons, the law that the state abandons. I assume once I saw Democrats, we wouldn't be getting to that Constitution. But sure enough, we read through, and this bill is a setup for the takedown. And all it is is really the state setting up a conduit for the state to get revenue and make it easy for a cannabis grower. So that's not good enough in my mind. I don't know about you, but I don't think that's good enough. It doesn't. That, that's not a legislation that helps the people. That, that's a state. That's a legislation that helps the state itself. What's the first four? Uh, to pay fees and taxes to a public body. This bill allows cannabis uh, uh, cannabis uh, users to go to an account that the law allows a chartered bank to set up a non-chartered account that allows cannabis growers to put their funds in so that they could use that account and use these things called special purpose checks in order to pay the fees and taxes to a public body. Pretty pretty uh, handy here, right? Are they thinking about the people? No, it doesn't look like it. You can pay rent or property that is leased by or on behalf of a cannabis business. You don't hear property owners here, do you? No, it's a lease. You're all dealing. You're always dealing in businesses here. And if you sign as a flesh and blood, a, a sign that whatever it's whether whatever name you use, you put on a form, you are working as the agent for the thing you just created, and they they accept that agent, the agency of that to create the straw person the straw man the straw person doesn't even exist it, it stands in its stead for it has a utility uh, you created that it's not ever you and so that we're not talking about getting your property paid for here if you're a cannabis grower no you better be renting or leasing well that ties over to your automobiles you get your best tax write right off leasing properties or uh, uh, causing a bill a reverse bill like a renting the property away not purchasing it outright and so this is how this is all set up. You see it right in this bill. And these, these, where the legislators, legislators know all about this, they didn't go to the Constitution to make a, a proper alternative. But to, it's number C here is to pay a vendor that is physically located in Oregon for goods and services associated with cannabis business. Okay, so they're trying to get away from the interstate problem. If you go intra, interstate, then it becomes a commerce, apparently, they think. And if you go intrastate, then it does it. Something in the state. The problem I have is the vehicle they're using is the what? The Federal Reserve note. If that's federal. And so they don't really get away from the problem here as far as how they get away from the utility in the first instance being they're part of that federal system as a state. Number D is to purchase bonds issued by a public body. So they make a conduit to go ahead and purchase bonds. I don't know what you're going to do with those bonds. But that's what you get to do as a cannabis grower under this bill. Now, to me, I didn't think that was such a good bill. It, it, but it does give us the idea of what, well, we got to work on alternatives. I'm telling you right now, in the world of alternatives, this is where people step up and offer their alternative. But what you do is you focus on the, as organic a document as you can find. And in this case, I believe it would be the Constitution that says what? The, the federal Constitution says that states have the right to they, they have the they have the right to mint coin, right, silver or gold coin. And so here's big constitutional power that the state itself does not serve. Why? Because it's not really a state. It's a bunch of attorneys and a bunch of people who who don't understand or agenda driven that are involved. And and we're told that they're it's they're insane. Uh, the marble nut house is what, if I understand, the Oregon capital is called. So just an insanity coming from there anyway. And so we have the ability to bring sanity, and it seemed to me that a real alternative that would help everybody would be this gold and silver coin. And that brought me right back to the mining district and why uh, we, if we would have had a better following, if people, if miners were not the microcosm of America, but they were actually forward thinking like they used to be, and actually be really sharp about what they did and do, uh, they would have seen the light of day on this and anticipated the future that it could have been the model of what I'm going to quickly suggest here without getting too deeply into it. That it used to be that the counties, your local government, 
your local public body that's measured in this in this uh, bill here. But Wood actually has it have an assay office, and your miners would come in and give the gold, and they would trade out for gold coin. That uh, it seems to me the better law in Oregon and anywhere else, and I think and it's not a new idea. Or I think Arizona has done this, and one other state. I never go back and research it, but wouldn't it be better just to make gold and silver coin? In vogue again, because it's always been lawful tender, uh, legal, not legal tender, it's lawful money. So why don't they just make that in vogue again? And then have the counties go ahead and trade dollars for gold. Or maybe go to the mining districts and get the gold from the miners as a grant. Seem to be a better start than trying to make this special conduit, which doesn't actually go into a banking industry that's not separate from the federal. They try to say that they can go through the unions and the credit unions, but they also tell you that they also have to have an agreement with the federal government about using those funds. It's about those funds through the organized system. Private use is authorized under the law under another provision, and it doesn't suffer this thing, which can be happened, be, can happen between municipalities which are considered persons. The state's not considered a person. The counties are. And it would be a private grant transaction that's outside of the system. If all all they have to do, in my mind, would be one of two two things, because they have to re-educate people. One is institute the use of lawful money in the state, and also then put money toward promotion that that's okay, and promote people into using that. And you probably would free up a lot of the cannabis users to go about doing what they need to do. It wouldn't just be vendors for their business, but it would be in their private their private goings-on as well, uh, when they want to buy more property, when they want to buy any other thing uh, that they want uh, that's not within the constraint of the business. If they want to buy a, maybe a car outside. They go down and use gold and silver coin. They don't go down and they don't try to get into the fiat system. So this bill is a reminder. We have answers if we would just step up. All we have to do is step up. We make an alternative. We offer, go back to the, go ahead, why don't you do what Arizona did? So if you if you need a lead to go ahead and use, I think Arizona did it. If I'm not, fix the, whatever states did it, use those. Go to North Dakota and said they make an independent thing. Go, why don't you use theirs instead? And everybody gets to use it. Not Not just a special class of people that can still, if you go read the story, you'll find out that these institutions are not free of the federal constraint. They're under threat of the criminal side. And they got three major laws, one of which is in, not surprising to me and maybe not surprising to those that listen to me behind the woodshed, is the Patriot Act itself. And so you see how they, when I told you they were confining this thing down into a necessity, how they've done that when they bring up that very same act again to constrain you and threaten people in loc- in state business, state local businesses, out of doing what they would otherwise have right to do. And so, again, they are making, they want to make charter banks and credit unions that are separate, that can be non-chartered. It all, my view on that, it doesn't look like it's going to work at the point that the federal government still has a handle on the medium of exchange between the banks and, uh, and where it would go. But you put that into a private context and you find out that all oh, these debt instruments are for all debts private and per, uh, private and uh, public. And then you, you kick that into a private nature that's in an entity, entities that are not subject as normal persons uh, or, not, or a state. And now you've removed it all over into, back into what? Production. And the, one of the things of county concern is, the, is your production base, right? Remember we talked about that? They have to be, they're supposed to be supporting that production base. Otherwise, they're, they're literally cutting their, juggler, their own juggler vein. Because that's how they, that's just how it works. We've lost how this thing has worked. We've lost imposition of the private principle rules of why we exist the way we do in, in the country, United States of America. And that's allowed for a lot of adulterations. And that's on us. And they're going to, and why? Because each one of us has our own property to protect, even if it's us. Anyway, going to quickly get to this again. There's a, a new idea. They want to make a, a, a banking alternative for a producer. Remember, this is production from the land and cannabis. And my suggestion is, why don't they just go back to the Constitution and throw out there, at least, at least if you only want to do the promotion, then say it's, li- it's lawful 
again, will protect lawful grants of, of exchange in gold and silver coin. And I would just love to hear anybody that may have an opinion on that in, the, in a simple question. How doesn't that answer the point? Remember, the feds can't touch gold and silver coin without it being an asset. It's not a debt instrument. It's not a debt, it's not a debt paper. It's not a debt function. It's not, a debt, it's not cleared through their clearinghouse, as they talk about in this article. And it comes from production, not commerce. If we were a people that understood the basics here, I don't even know why this would be, even be a question. But I told you, we live in a time when you have to start making laws that makes principled things law, lawful again, makes them in vogue again. You have to give permission to people. Otherwise, they get feared because they got the power coming, let's say, in this case, from the feds. And they have many, their minions will come in on you and in serious ways. And I don't know, anybody who's pretty straightforward and intelligent doesn't want to stir that in hornet's nest. Now, there's ways I've told you you can, not, you can still engage without hurt stirring the hornet's nest. Or you, it's interesting because you do, even do better than that. You keep them from coming out of their nest. We've done that in, in my case. We've done that quite a bit relative to the Forest Service and some federal agencies. They don't even want to talk with us because they can't answer the most basic record that we've established. And when they answer it, they'll realize that what we've been saying is that they are, have no authority. And they have no authority in a very particular place, and we point that out. And we happen to be standing in that place. I talked to you last week about being the exclusion. That's what I'm talking about. So, I'm again, I'm not talking this, oh, it's my opinion. In a few instances of what I do in life, I've done that to these agencies the same way. Why isn't a constitutional exclusion uh, preferred over a, a, a simply just a, a privateering plunder system that makes sure the state gets theirs and nobody else? Now, I want to point out one other thing. If you didn't pick it up, they talk about the pay rent and property that is leased. If you go look in this state, uh, or check, I think it's chapter 180, excuse me, 129, I think it is. It's a definition for income. For all you all think that the federal definition is the guiding one. The, fed, the state definition for income hasn't been overthrown by the Federal Reserve, uh, federal, um, excuse me, the IRS, which means that it's valid. And you all might, might find it interesting to go read that. Because it'll tell you what income is. It's not what you think it is. It is what the state has declared. And it just happens to be pay rent on property. Back to a landlord. That's income to the landlord. Why that is, I don't know with the, with the patent. But notwithstanding here or there. So rents are income under federal law. That's another problem with this bill. How you get outside of the income generation attachment to the IRS is an interesting problem here. They think that this bill is going to extricate and make an alternative, when actually it's not really doing anything other than making a conduit to the state, which is not a person subject. It's a state. And so it has a different, a little different condition that's on there. The point is that these law, law legislators are making legislation to make the state more powerful and loot some more, make it easy to be looting against a cannabis producer. And I've explained about how all this is all wrong, but I don't get any feedback on how to make it right. In fact, I've had some cannabis, uh, I've seen cannabis users come to uh, some of this mining association meeting to find out about their water rights. And uh, when you suggest what they should do, they, they decide that they know better and they go out and they don't do what they're supposed to do. And they have lots of fights with people over water instead of doing just what the law says it says they should do. And so then that brings them susceptible when you don't, when you can't, when you make a big dust up in your county, then that makes the county interested. And they want to do what? They want to do more regulation, too. They don't have any authority, but because no one's doing the proper law, no one be, can tell that no one has the, the, the power of the law to tell the county it doesn't have a right to do that. It sits in another agency of the state, and it's not a different principle. And so this is, again, I, I see so much going on. So many people have so many opinions, and nobody runs with the foundational things that that made it all work for us. Here was an example, as I've been telling you. You want to use gold and silver coin in your states, folks, if you got cannabis, and they got and this this conflict between the state and the federal sitting there, I think some minds need to come together to bring out the better answer. The better alternative would be though, to constitutional provisions of 
gold and silver coin and have all the reasons why. Not just that it's written, but how the federal government is not able to bring it into the fold to cause it to be a problem. And you get rid of all this registration as well. You remember, when they're going to tie into something that's regulated at any level, you're going to have to give your guts as a producer as well. They're going to track you. It's a different way to track and trace what's going on. Why? Because they're only interested in what? What, you, what they claim your income is, which when you read the word, the definition of income has nothing to do with cannabis production or any other production. And yet people think it does. In fact, the taxation comes from the demeaning, the, the, the defaming of a property as real property and not patently. Real property is taxable. The, the money derived from that real property, which is a, a property, a land held less than fee simple, is taxable. And so there's a whole lineage of failure here that they're, they're, they're setting up on the state side to bring people more into failure, and no one understands how this works. And when you, if you understand what I just said, you have to reassert your property rights and your grants and the grant of the gold to be coin money in a state and being it, bring it in vogue again. It's always been lawful. They just people kind of go on a use. You, you, you promote the use now. You promote that it's lawful again, and you ought to. And then it opens up, the, it starts to sever. It makes the exclusion and severs all the connections to all the regulation that you see. And with a, with a, a mind in people, a mass, an educated mass of people, they're not, there's, it's a, I don't see how, this is the, this was part of the protection. The, the state can't come around this. There's a, no place for the attorneys to get leverage. There's no court case that the, the courts can throw this out. In fact, you start identifying the courts as one of the main culprits. Why? Because they're the invader that happened, at least in this state, in that, in that state, uh, if you go read the chapter 174, down around 510, you see, HB2 in there, and it says that they it changed out the substituted the permanent laws of the people for a model business corporation act. That's the bar association did that overthrow. Did anybody stop it? No, no, they capitulated. They claimed that they 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 capitulated to the to the demand and threat that anybody who was uh, established before in the organic sense would not be covered by the new governance, and everybody believed it, and no one threw it out, and so they all applied in, which is required. That's why I say become the exclusion. Don't be worried about not being covered. If you know the law, the actual foundation and establishment, there's no need to be covered. People don't have a, I don't people I don't really don't believe people appreciate that simple little view, how that really works. And it's in the statutes to read if you know where you're looking. But here's okay, so folks, here's an, another reminder. Went through all this discussion. Oregon bill created a bill like banking alternative. Doesn't really. All it is, it makes a conduit to the state for revenue on a thing called income. It's all federal. If you look very carefully, it's still all federal. I don't know how this actually is separate. Uh, but it gives us the idea that if they're going to make this alternative, we may have anybody who's a, a legislator who doesn't want to be a legislator, who wants to make a point, can actually offer the constitutional answer here. And became one more state that brings gold and silver coin into vogue, which is not taken. It, it cannot. It's not something that goes through the the, the circulation houses of, of the federal of the Fed. And the Fed has a word here on all this. So you have to get you have to exclude yourself from that system. They can't do it inside the state. And the state that exists now is its own private corp, foreign corporation. It's in the foreign nature of the United States as a corporation. Remember, the application of 28 U.S.C. 3002, as it just now occurs to me, is over financial things that, that the United States is, and its instrumentalities are considered a corporation. Not everywhere, and not in every instance, but relative to financial things. And this is what we're talking about. That could be viewed as another veneer jurisdiction that has... Exclusive, the exclusive authority of which is, is all the agencies that are tied to anything uh, that we might call con, uh, construct out of what we call financial, which is actually this fiat thing. And the tools and the, the services and all these cl the, the facilities that they use to clear this stuff out to keep track of it all. Remember, gold and silver doesn't do that. Why we've gone from that, now that I understand this, I'm not so brilliant, it took me a while to figure this out. 
why we meant from them from that from gold and silver as people even and notwithstanding 1971 uh, debasing so then we went to commodity that still has value maybe not as, as helpful to us but it's still more valuable than the debasing they can do to your life and you we all hear the number and I don't know how maybe it's maybe less than this that the fiat since fiat your value of your of your life has gone down to where that fiat face value only has a real value of like four cents so that's another illusion then you have this constraint that's another taxation if i can say another obligation they put on it and this state of oregon the state of washington the state of california idaho all of them even texas don't mess with texas you've been messed with they're all in this thing and they don't will not make provisions and uh, i would say anybody puts a law in that says yeah we're going to make gold and silver coin as the constitution re allows vogue again you know make sure you don't make a connection to uh, the federal system because they'll want to do that the lawyers will do that the district made a special regulation a special ordinance in its own uh, jefferson mining district that it keeps these two mediums separate so there's a there's a need to do it and there's a there's a re and there's a reasons why and it's been i can give you an example of one one government miners government that that did that for this reason and so there's a little bit to know but it's not that much more than to say well what's the alternative more better then why don't we just go ahead and agree to make gold and silver coin uh, in voguing it's always been lawful it's just that people don't think it's 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 they need to give be given permission how fallen we are as a free, keeping the republic type of people we have to be t tell ourselves by our masters what what's okay those of us that look inside the statutes we know where to go to the savings clauses and say well you never had that power to begin with so our minds that we the way we approach this are totally di mostly totally different completely different in the approach than a lot of people in doing a lot of this and I, you know, I see the tension. I see the, the misunderstandings. It's, it, there's nothing more I can do about that until people come to the realization of what's actually going on. I, I really can't speak to a whole lot of it. That's why I can only talk to you here and hope you listen and hope you go work out what I'm saying, go research what I'm saying, go look at the depth of it, focus down, and not, don't take so much so you can start to take little bites of the big thing until you can devour the whole thing. And I don't know if we'll ever do that. We're so far behind it, but. We can certainly use these instances to say, wait a minute, why don't we just completely throw out the banking industry? Let's go back to our de jure money. Let's not make it lawful, let's make it in vogue, because it's never been unlawful. It's just we stop as people use it. Let's remind people they get to use it. And let's start with our producers. Let's empower the producer which starts this whole thing. Cannabis is simply a production of of a product out of the ground under grants is that so hard to understand actually really I mean is that so hard to understand we're doing this to ourselves I'm not actually asking you all to do a whole lot of work just for us to understand better and do better and that means that and the faster it works is there's more people pushing their shoulder to the cart that went off the off the trail and needs to be corrected First, you have to throw the, the guy that stole your card out. And then you get to take control of your card again. And so that's a different, little different, one step before we get to this. But I don't know. I've been talking a lot of time, blah, 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 blah. No one's going to do anything unless someone does something. But here's a, an evidence of, of alternatives. And I say we're living in the world of alternative, and the alternative that will be chosen is under the Hegelian dialectic that they've set up we call alternative dispute resolution by consensus. It's a whole process, and they get what they want. They get the future they want because you participate in that fraud. And you never make the alternative. You're not even around to make the alternative. You'd rather complain about how high your property taxes are or the next regulation that's come down or how someone else is going to regu be now being regulated on something that you participate with as a need because they produce it for you. You'd rather just complain about it. And that's the tough part behind the woodshed. How many years have I been doing this, folks? How many years did, uh, did does anybody out there, you look around, all these people, how popular they are, how quickly they became popular, and I'm pretty producing information that is really unparalleled, really is unparalleled. 
and no one shows up in the numbers they need to to save ourselves. It's fascinating. Maybe I'm not the charismatic to sell it, but it's really not about that, is it? No, people like Alex Jones, well, all these guys, the cliques that are out there, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of views, everyone nodding and feeling and getting invigorated about this. It ends up being nonsense information. How much can you know about the Rothschilds before you finally decide I'm not going to participate with their system? But that never goes that far. No, I'd rather listen to the next va wild story about how I'm being brutalized by these same people. At any rate, I, I don't know. I get so frustrated. I get so, I'm getting so frustrated about this. Everybody's like running around with chickens with their head cut off or, and complaining about it, and they stuck their head on the on the stump to uh, to get it get their head whacked by the axe. I, I just don't get any of this. I'm not I'm not sure what is the problem. I get I, in fact I started thinking about it. you see I'm not talking much. I don't even understand where to go further. Well, so let's move to the next tab. Are you going to step up and start making laws that we need? Or are we going to just complete, completely complain? Here's the option to be able to help the cannabis people to find out that they can lobby their so-called representatives. Or if you're in a state that does an initiative, start the initiative. If your legislators won't do it. But what is so hard about making gold and silver coin again? And if and there's a more to this. I, it goes better. Like I said, the the older in the olden times, in the day, they had assay offices right in the county. They did all their gold business and their transactions with money through the counties, so they could be the hub of the start of all this as as well. Anyway. There's more to say. There's more to know. I don't, can't do it all here behind the woodshed, but I can give you ideas to start thinking about and then get beyond thinking to start saying, yeah, why aren't we using, why don't we get our states to do gold and silver coin, especially when you have such a need as this. If you think that the cannabis won't be paying taxes if you go to gold and silver, well, you're, you're mistaken because they, the state will then be giving itself re-permission to accept gold and silver uh, coin uh, for payment of their own taxes. So they're going to get their taxes. It's just, how are you going to do it? You're going to do it by the way the, the legislators and attorneys do it to keep the system in question and in fight and under threat by the feds? Or do you extricate it and make it the exclusion? And then everybody just goes to using that, that medium again. And we have more ways to cut out what's going on. Yes, there's this lingering question that the IRS claims that gold and silver has its value that can be reduced to Fed. Well, let's, we haven't found, we haven't done two arguments there. We have two two presentations of notices against that imposition, uh, and I've told to him, told them to you before. We have the person liable, and how do you have right to tax something that's coming out of a grant? So first of all, you don't have the activity, and then you don't have the medium. And so when this gets moved forward and people start understanding this better then maybe we stop seeing the hiccups. We start seeing better the better thing that goes on about the principle that was supposed to be riding in this nation before organized political systems and the Bar Association, their agents, the foreign impositions, the NGOs, the stakeholders of whatever uh, agenda came in to take your, 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 your um, nation down. Uh, so, move on. You know, I told you, you're going to have to, the stupidest stuff is going to have to be made legal. And you know, we got another uh, another um, story about that. It comes out, the Texas House passes bill to legalize kid-run lemonade stands. Now, how really stupid are we that we needed this law? But we need this law. It's how This is how stupid we become as people. You actually have to pass a, get a law to pass to give a, a, a minor the right, the ability to have a lemonade stand. You know, we talked a little bit about this. Is that the state came in on its police power to stop this. There was a health risk. Well, apparently there isn't when this bill goes through. My point is, again, if you thought you had a principle to live and you thought it was normal, these things are being thrown out in preference to the alternatives, which are self, uh, whoever offers it is self-perfected uh, um, 
or their help, not yours. You have to start going in, it's as stupid as this is, you have to make a law for everything that's principled and right. Here, a Texas House passes a bill to legalize kid-run lemonade stands. Now, how much do they control your life in the state? It will also show you something about the prison you live in. But until you start stepping up, as I keep telling you in other areas, you've got to get in with the police and make their policy for them because they're too smart, that you can be too smart to be a cop and you can be too psychologically stable. They need guidance. The Supreme Court says your local military officers in the costumes of police need guidance on how they're going to treat the occupied people. So, Texas passes the bill to legalize kid run stand. Yeah, you eliminate that. Yeah. That's right, because we're in a time that anything you thought was normal has to be made the law again. It wasn't good enough that gold and silver coin is in the Constitution to be used. You have to make a law that says it's okay to use it. Why? I don't know, but that's who we is as a population anymore. Interesting way to stop some of the problem and the profit of the uh, the the. Uh, abortion industry, uh, court upholds Indiana law banning sales of aborted baby parts, if you didn't think it went on, first of all. So a sale of aborted baby parts is going on, and we have talked behind the woodshed about how and why and what, and last week I kind of creepied out, or the week before, one of these last, recent weeks, they're going to use these, they need to get these fetal parts right before the baby's born, because they need that baby in almost intact shape, so they can do what? Do their next generation experiments on them mostly developed fetus. That was an industry decision. Well, you can stop that by saying you can't sell in aborted baby parts. You can kill what Roe versus Wade established. I said you have to make laws that are principled. This becomes into really uh, slippery slope stuff, but if you want your son and daughter to make have a lemonade, an innocent lemonade stand before they're supposed to get uh, going to into, uh, have capacity and and, and have majority relative to contracts and making decisions and applying to the state for things. You want them to have an innocence. You're going to now have to make laws in order for them to, to get used to being an entrepreneur before they, they work up into being a servant to the state, a slave. But uh, court of, you want to stop ab uh, the, the sale of aborted baby parts? You're not going to stop the abortion. Well, not necessarily. But you're going to stop the industry that was created around abortion. And a court upholds the Indiana law banning sales of aborted baby parts, I thought was a pretty interesting way to get at the problem. In other words, for those of you that are minded in the law and you want to start making some policy changes, because this is all just policies, nothing law, uh, actually, because of the way this works out. There's laws to regard, but they're not really being regarded. And so that's another problem. And this is why I tell you about doing your remedies in certain ways, so that you trap these people from keeping you sequestered away from what you have right of. Uh, but uh, anyway, so that's a way to do it. You set up a case. It's, these have trial test test cases. I don't know if this is a test case. It doesn't matter. They set this forward. The law got put forward, and then it was it was uh, upheld. And so this is the world you live in. And I don't really like it all. I don't like all this stuff that they can do around you and to you. And actually, this doesn't affect me at all, even if I was in the state, right? But still, it's important to see on the things that do affect you, how you go about to adjust them. You just don't sit there and wallow in the stink that someone creates around you. Hopefully you're ahead of that. Hopefully you're vigilant and observant. And when something comes down the pike ahead of time, because they give you the notice everywhere, it's in the news all the time. The notice is in, the, in your awareness all the time, and that's what they're using to take you out. You can't rest when you hear this stuff. And I'm still saying if we would organize up as a knowledgeable people, we wouldn't have to get, each one of us wouldn't jump on everything. We would just have, we would know uh, generally about ourselves as a knowledgeable people, who is best to hit certain uh, subject matters, and they would jump on this stuff. And we would maybe lend our help, a phone call, say, do you need any help on some of that? Got, I got nothing going on right now in my specialty, uh, but I can lend help. This is partly what I wanted to get the Jefferson Mining District to do. We'd have a bunch of miners doing a little specialized things, and when we had uh, needed some extra help, some more people could come to help out the a, a more critical problem. Again, the microcosm of the minor, I was thinking we could create the example of what the society needs to start looking at. Why? Because we're living in a time when you're living in a military occupation, 
uh, the mil military occupier has immunity against whatever it does. And if, so if you, if you want to have some protection about that, what they can't take out is your ability to make laws against them taking you out for the stupidest stuff. You know, in some regard, I look at if we can't make a law that allows kids to do uh, uh, lemonade stands and other things that that innocuous, like we all we all did, with those of us in the day, uh, we're you know, holy smokes, this is the problem. So when you get into bigger issues, maybe like this banking thing, it really takes some thought in how to avoid a system, but actually sit in an organic thing that predates it all. Uh, you you have to have a a, a pretty good uh, fixation in in that subject matter. It's not impossible. It was written. It's supposed to be understood by everybody, so there's no excuse there. But if we can't get little ones to have an eliminate standard, we have to write laws. Let's go back to the the basic question: What place do you live in? <laughs> That's a point <laughs> that that even has to happen. Can't be a, a free society. Can't be a place under law. It's under a rule of law. It's underneath this this contortion, this carnival mirror, even locally to us. So, another thing here. So, here the court upholds this uh, aborted baby, uh, can't you banning the sale of aborted baby parts? So, we, well, they do it, folks. So, now, who's been making money on baby parts that anybody in the United States might condemn China? <laughs> if you don't think all this privateering, pi pirateering is, isn't going global, it hasn't been global. It's just a joke. Uh, but here we go. Move on to, you know, more things of non nonsense uh, that you have to be careful of. And this is another test case type stuff, I have, I have to wonder. A U.S. judge halts hundreds of drilling projects in groundbreaking climate change ruling. So if you think that's going away because we think that it's nonsense, uh, the system is not. And why do we know that? Because the Bar Association, in its House Des Delegates Resolution, in paper, since the, what, early 90s, has said that they promote sustainable development one of the weapons of which is climate change. And so this judge is actually ho ho towing the party line of the Bar Association to impose this climate change ruling. For those of you that think you can sit back because you know it's a fraud, and I know it's a fraud, you think you can rest on your laurels, you cannot at engage my request for you to do a carbon, a commie carbon meeting uh, uh, in position in legislation for your carbon tax. If you think this is going away, you're just deluded. You're a deluded soul. And you need to really kind of look at yourself. Go to that mirror because that's the one that's going to be doing the change. But uh, in a rebuke to the Trump administration, this is a problem because they want to focus it on Trump like the counter Trump. It's not. It's counter to the laws of the United States. It's a war on the laws of the United States by something that's voluntary. And this is the thing that caught me. Even if climate change is a thing, and I don't mean the claim changing climate. I mean the policy, the hypothesis that hasn't proven, it can't be proven. Even if it was a thing, and we see the Bar Association admits that it will promote this, and it's only a concept. That the, that the judge entered into this and said that greenhouse gas emissions must be considered, he violated the provision that this is only a voluntary imposition. And based in NEPA, and this article, when you look at what they're supposed to do, and the BLM is supposed to make consideration, even in the NEPA, the climate change couldn't hold sway due to the obligation on the on the agency that if it wants to impose climate change, even if it's something, it can only do so to the extent practicable. In other words, it has the burden to show that any of it is, is more important, or at least as important, than man's environment. Because in NEPA, a supplemental law on how the agencies make all these regulations, it, the NEPA states that there's two environments. Most people overread this part, but there's nature's environment and there's man's environment. And, ma and in balance, even, man's environment prevails. And so, you, so that provision could not take a voluntary concept and impose it on an agency because it could never, under the rules, be able to justify the consideration. But this judge is showing you that he is answering to the Bar Association's party line. I'm giving climate change credit here, and you can't even do it. 
Now, we all know it's a fraud, so this is even worse. So anyway, look at these notices to us, and we see where the trail's going. It's going over the edge into the stinking abyss. It's still going in that direction, and none of you are getting it. None of you pick it up. No one want to talk about against it. You get into, oh, it's drilling oil and all this other stuff. You don't realize it's the imposition. It's a blanket imposition on global, of global governance on things that were supposed to be voluntary. And they've infiltrated inside your legal system. Even the legal system can't ha handle this, as I just explained about the rule. And they completely destroy your law with it. What is this? This is reflexive decision at the United States District Court. And those of you that did the study, Title 28, jurisdictions, you understand that this is a United States District Court. It's not a court of competent jurisdiction. And if they're making a decision and that, that is a valid decision, it's on a territory that doesn't exist on the land. It's in a fabricated jurisdiction, no different than that fiat system. It's in a veneer of jurisdiction and authority. And so I read these again. I read these titles, these notices to us. I'm looking at a whole other bunch of stuff going on. And I don't understand why uh, no, more people don't look at it to start focusing their attention a lot better. A uh, quick little thing. Yeah, you know, NEPA says that claims that man is not part of nature. Yeah, that's another observation. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. I don't talk too much because I can get off, you know, we get off onto philosophical stuff. But yes, it, because they made nature and m even NEPA explains that man's not even part of the nature that he's here for. That's an interesting full, uh, idea as well. Uh, so for, but for practical application things and what we do uh, to get to the quickness of it, we just deal with it on the obvious thing that if there's a balance and there is an offset, then the offset has to be done within the, the guidance, which is lawful, actually. Not, and what we've listened to, and I've said this before, the environmentalists uh, have flipped. They've weighted one side heavier than the other when they didn't have the right to. And the judges who are predisposed to allow this, because they said in their, uh, their party line is they're going to promote this, this war upon the United States, the laws of the United States, this treason, uh, that they helped and aided that false weighting of the balance. In other words, your the little picture that uh, we have a blindfolded uh, woman, that's not true. There's at least one finger pulling down part of the part of the blindfold. Trump signs executive order to promote free speech on college campuses. The theme here this today is what kind of place you live in when this has to happen? What kind of a place do you live here when you have to make a special alternative to have production, have money, uh, access to to, fun, to funds and bank accounts? Uh, what kind of a country do you live in when a state has to say, you know, kids can make lemonade stands and it's okay? The kind of country that says uh, in the Constitution there all the states are, are, are have agreed to in the beginning of the origination that says you have the right to coin, mint coin money, silver and gold. Don't use it. We've got to now make a law that it's okay. And now Trump has to sign an executive order that promotes free speech. What kind of place are we living in that we have to do all this? And then you look at how he had to do it. He didn't force them. He just said, it's a, this is how the government works and people have missed this point. Even the agencies work on this principle. It's like advise, uh, promote, uh, uh, monitor. There's nothing, no teeth in any of the stuff, but the, everyone thinks that there is. He, Trump could do this by saying, well, you could do that. This executive order says, if you do the continue the path that you're going and not let the speech be free, like it was just not 10 years ago, we're just going to withhold your federal funds. That's the biggest story right there, more than even this. The first thing for me is, what kind of a country you live in that a president, so this this office has to come through and tell people to give uh, to give the instrumentalities of states to to give free speech equally? But look at what they they did. They did it in the capacity of a financial constraint, didn't they? A threat of loss of leveraging funding from the feds. There's your corporate connection again for those of you that want to go through the 28 USC 3002 all the time. You shouldn't, but only do it for finances. Go look at the beginning of that chapter. You'll see it. It's not that it's not usable. And it's usable. We'll use it right here. But it's not usable everywhere, like in, in land grants, because that didn't even exist. There's no finances essentially involved at the land and the work grant. But getting back to this, what country are you living in where it promotes free speech or art of an amendment uh, to the Constitution? Do you think that thing is working when, the, when, when people are beginning to weigh with doing this through these entities, in this case called universities?
What did we sue in 2013? But the university system for being co-opted, infiltrated, occupied, and they are the instrument of destruction. And the only thing the president can do is say, we're just going to keep you. You can still you can be able to do it, but we're not going to keep you. We're not going to pay you no money through the federal channels. Because that's, that's really what, how you live and breathe. So these entities are financial in their origination, aren't they? So, hey, more thoughts. Uh, go where you will with that. The point is, is I keep thinking, what kind of a country are we living in that, that, allows, that does this and allows it and requires these sorts of responses? A country that has judges that, that make law into things that are voluntary and not proven, contrary to the basic rule, and a supplemental at that. It, why am I even commenting? Why do I hear? Why am I not hearing this and realizing everybody in the world knows about it, so I don't have to talk about it? Teachers shot execution style with pellet guns in an extreme school shooting drill. What country do you live in where the teachers are being shot by cops with pellet guns? Do I need to read more on that one? This is what your teachers are going through. This is the trauma that everybody, the abuse that's at the hands of the occupier is going in this country and, and most everybody. Well, except for the teachers that got shot four or five times. And oh, they hurt. They even draw blood. And these people, too smart to be a cop and too psychologically stale, stable, had the trigger on their finger. And the cops say, oh, well, we investigated when the first teacher complained. Wow, what a lesson for everybody. It took the first teacher to not be a cricket. You understand how many more teachers that came out of the room when they were told, don't tell anybody the four, the four teachers are going to come in next after you, what happened here? And they didn't? One finally spoke up. One didn't be a cricket. What a lesson on that story. It has nothing to do with the teachers being shot or asking the question, what place do you live in that this is okay? This is so far outside of my thoughts, I, can't, I don't even know what to think about some of this stuff. Literally, it's getting beyond my ability to. It's not that I don't comprehend it. It's that I think I comprehend it so much, I'm speechless. Where do, oh, here's the next one. Where do you begin with this stuff, actually? Well, there's a place to begin, but I mean just the fact of having to deal with this, these kinds of concepts. And, and such, such a menial thing like a law that allows a kid, a little goat, to have a lemonade stand? Are you kidding me? You would think that's the worst, that's the most important things we have to do is worry about that. We have to make a law over it and nothing else? And then I, uh, again, a speech, I just don't even know where to begin on this. This is such a, these are such vile, deeply vile problems. I don't even know where to begin with them. What kind of a place do you live in when the, the uh, cockistocracy is the only thing I can come to right there? It's not even, again, it's a governance. It's not a government. It's not by and for the people. It's a cockistocracy. The worst has risen to the top. That, that you get this statement out of a secretary of state that, in the past, I would have thought was a very noble thing because it's your interact, your diplomatic re interaction with pe other peoples with other ideas in the same world having to live together. Pompeo claims Trump sent, sent by God to save Israel. That was the first story that caught my attention. And I just had my responses to the story was many extreme serious defects here. The, the, that statement, <laughs> Pompeo claims Trump sent by God. Just I could, I still can't fathom what I'm reading there. And I, we talked about a little bit about that when we were looking at Trump coming in, the evangelical part of this, and the Presbyterian part of that, and the Catholic part in connection, and the focus in on the presenting the fact and promoting Israel early. And I said this is a latent problem. And my question was, would it would it fester up? Well, we're seeing it is, folks. This guy is exactly who he says. If you looked early on, it's all coming to fruition, even while we had the nonsense of all this other stuff and the Russian probe and the Mueller the nonsense, as I called it. Uh, oh, I can't remember what I called it on the Freaker's Ball Twitter. Nonsense. It's complete. It's filth. I say this is a Mueller thing. Is filth. Is is also a distraction, but it's not. It's not a distraction. It's actually attack. It's like an in, intra-party attack, but. 
Pompeo claims Trump is sent by God. Uh, I don't even know where to, again, I'm lost. I, I, I'm speechless at how defective that that whole thing would be, and not just on the politics. It's defective across the board and deep in every subject matter that you would discuss. Pompeo claims Trump sent by God to save Israel. Turkey scolds the U.S. for Golan Heights. And this is becoming a bigger problem now that they're stealing an occupier in a foreign land internationally recognized as such as going after the Golan Heights more land that they are occupiers to than have not gained the right proper the right and proper claim to the land as I identified was maybe a better proper to get away from all the name calling and so called anti Semitics uh, that they want to throw in your face. You go at it at the land and all of a sudden all that stuff evaporates. And I've talked I had a couple broadcasts about that and how we would approach that. And so that's another thing that that is a problem. If they can't do that, then what God sent Trump? And uh, when you start looking at the biblical side of this, or at least even the, what we're told about these people, and I did a broadcast about that, this is a very uh, ominous condition. And so I don't know who Pomp uh, Pompeo is. I went and looked around. Uh, found out he's a director of the Central Intelligence Agency. It started to, right there. It told me a whole lot. You go through his background. Uh, he's uh, looked, though it wasn't mentioned, he went to a military side. He went through his life in the military side path. Uh, interestingly, in the same time of my life, he's, he's doing all this. How do people do this? I'm always fascinated how people get the stature that they have, uh, the, the placement that they have, how they got where they are. Uh, and, and I'm just behind the woodshed. It's always been amazing to me. Uh, didn't think I was that incapable watching all these people who now become zealots in the caucusocracy. At the same time I went to the Bojo, they went to become people that are destroying other people. How is that? But reading on Pompeo, it's pretty interesting just watching and going through it. Guess what? He happens to be a, a lawyer as well. And so we have lots of the negative, lots of check marks in this guy about that statement. And like I said, I don't even know where to start. Uh, Pompeo then came out and said, God sent Trump to invade Iran. Now, I don't know where all this evangelical zealotry came from, but there it was. The latency I identified early is coming out. It's kind of terrifying in a way, especially when it's in error. And so uh, so I look around, and I also then started to find out lots of people are discussing a bit of this. Maybe they're doing an error-filled presentation as well. And one article I found, I just wanted to pull an article up just because it was a concise summary, but I noticed a statement that was made that I didn't understand. And it said, Pompeo made his remarks on Purim, the celebration of the Jewish exodus from the ancient Achaemenid Persian Empire, today known as Iran. Now, I don't know about, about y'all, but when I read that, I said, well, the ancient empire, the Jews didn't, the, ex the exodus wasn't out of this ancient empire, to my knowledge. Have I misread that that much? Well, so I had to go back to show you that I'm, uh, you know, I'm not infallible, certainly, and I'm always making sure I try to keep track of all these things. But the Exodus, the Exodus that we talk here about the Bible, they're referring to the Bible here. So, again, focusing their attention, don't forget the controls underneath this going through the Jesuits and the Vatican's we talked about long ago about this, this crew of people. Uh, but the, the Exodus was, uh, is, is, and I'm going to wiki. Wikipedia, which I understand is conditioned by uh, Jewish uh, editors, and so we take it with a grain of salt, I suppose, here, but those of you can go find the, uh, the parallel book called the Bible to go read the proof of it. But the Exodus is a founding myth of the Israelites. Enough said. They're not the Israelis, are they? As I talked to you about the pre-48s and the post-48s. Whether or not it's a myth, I don't, I'm not going to even talk about it. It's of the Israelites, not the Jews. Because Judah was only a part of the land of Israel. And so we move on. Well, then what was this exodus that uh, Kurt, oh, I didn't name him, but Kurt Nemo's article references? How could he even make such a statement that the Jewish exodus came out of Persia? I never understood that. I'm confused. Well, then I find it on, again, on Wikipedia, the exodus of Iran's Jews. Oh, there was another, another exodus. It wasn't the exodus. It was an exodus. What happened? Well, it was the exodus of Iran Jews refers to the emigration of Persian Jews. Oh, that's right. There's Persia there. Persians, not Arabs. 
from Pahlavi, Iran in the 1950s. And the later migration wave, wave from Iran during and after the Iranian Revolution of 1979, during which the community of 80,000 dropped to less than 20,000. The migration, not the exodus, the migration of Persian Jews after Iranian Revolution is mostly attributed to the fear of religious depos deposition of the, Shah, of, our, of, of the Shah regime, consequent domestic violence, and the Iraq War. So they weren't ordered out or pressured to get out or allowed to leave. They were in fear. And as I said before, all people that have no way to, to fight will flight if they have the possibility. 20,000 remained. Not everybody was taken out. Well, so that got me thinking about Pompeo, uh, this statement over here of Kurt Nimmo relative to Pompeo's statement in consequent, uh, coincident with that. And I'm thinking, this is more really the occupier cl falsely claiming vengeance on Iran when the so-called exodus was a migration out of fear, not the exodus out of the ancient, and which wasn't even out of Persia anyway. All this stuff, because my mind was saying, well, it all happens down around is where Israel's current borders are, all in Egypt and all that area. It's right in there. That's where all this stuff happens during the Bible. And sure enough, you go and look. Nimmo was, is now saying this is the exodus, but it's not. And so we've got to be careful on even people that may be given credibility for their truthfulness. I was confused. I looked that up. I found out it's not true. This is all the post-48 stuff. This means the people that are occupiers right now that Trump is sent by God to be the children of Israel, which in the Bible we read are the essentially children of the devil, the Satan, they're not going to be supported. They did not come out of Persia. This is just an excuse to go attack Iran. And this brings up the level and the and the stature of the defects, fatal, fatal defects. In the statement of Pompeo, I'm actually shocked about this, that they would actually say this. Uh, when you look at the facts, you look at the psychology, you look at the dynamic, you look at the history, you look at anything, that's the relationships, the anything, it's like one big defect. And so we now have the cockistocracy speaking in, I guess this is the overriding thing, how many things in history have been done in the name of religion, folks. And now we get to the divine right of kings. And these people are mental. These are mental people. The mentally deranged, defective people. I don't know what more to say about it. The, the observation here is so wrong and so violative to people generally. It actually just answers the whole reason what's going on. Now, we can sit back, I guess, and watch it, but this is a serious, serious problem. And we wonder, well, what's the, uh, the Israelis, what's, you know, they need to be protected. No, they were imposed. We went through all this stuff. When they can make a land claim there, I'm, I'm good with it. But no one in the world believes they can make the land claim they're making. That's not even my decision. I w if they were, whether I'm good with it or not, I know that I think, about, who cares what the guy behind the woodshed thinks? It's going to be what those people say, but to say that God sent Trump to save the Israelis to attack Iran because of some exodus that happens? No, no, no. This is all part of the plan to take and cause these, uh, literally cause death. Uh, Trump said it, uh, serious sand and death. And he's continuing to support it. And the people around him think he's the Messiah for that, apparently. It is not something I like to hear at all, even if I wasn't so shocked by it. And I, I don't know why I'm even going on here. I, I think the point is made. I hope the point is made. We have some serious cockistocracy going on right now, folks. And we're helping people. And I'm not talking about the people that are true. I'm talking about this fiction that's been built up. And we call it, we can give it a name, it's called Zionism. It's a political movement. It's after, the, the, the Golan Heights is, is also, because they just found all the oil offshore, it's about oil. So we have a common theme going on. You know, Britain tried to take Iran's oil and got it for a while, and then they had that fiasco, and then we got, and then Carter sent his little pills over there, and, and they all crashed, and we had a big embarrassment. 
that's the whole bottom line point. That this is all still got oil sitting in it and gas, control of the land, uh, uh, destruction of people. They're willing to kill people. They're going to bring rule of law and democracy everywhere. You're watching it happen. Now you apply all this over to Venezuela. I'm not talking about the people and the corruption in their government. It's everywhere, folks. I'm talking about when you put on the white hat in the world, you better keep it unstained. And we cannot say that as a people. And we're watching. If I didn't know anything else, uh, if all of the news was uh, talking about how this all worked, if I didn't know anything else about all this setup and the propaganda, the fact that a guy around Trump is saying that Trump is a given by is sent by God to go take out Iran and support Israel is the work of the devil, is all I can tell, and that's not my words. Am I getting religious? Well, I don't know what the devil means. I just know you're going to get the devil is usually not a good thing I want to hear when I'm a little kid, that's for sure. But here, what do these people do? Israel's, the, the Trump, the God, God sent this guy to, to, to save, Pompeo says God sent Trump to save Israel. What does is Israel just come up in the news? Israel's three largest banks pay hundreds of millions in fines for helping U.S. citizens evade taxes. I, I don't even know if I need to read any more. The con, absolutely uh, criminal setup, and they're getting off. This is regulation. As long as they pay the fine, they're okay. Billions, folks, sucking from the system while they're also taking money to go invade lands that they can't claim are theirs. And the world, none of the world recognizes it, unless, well, except the aider and the better of the occupation, Trump, the one that God sent. If this doesn't start to make a weird and obvious w violation in your senses, I, I don't know what does. If we want to believe ourselves to be a peaceful people in the United States, these stories here that we're being told are, uh, they're not, what do you say about it? I'm speechless on this. I don't even know what where to begin with how bad this whole thing really is. And when I watch a nation of people that would rather argue with themselves over whether Trump was better or Obama or the o, 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 what, OAC, whoever, the pre-hatchling escapee, uh, you folks are in for some serious trouble. Some serious trouble. If you need to set up a lemonade stand bill, you are in some serious trouble. And yet we need to do all that and more. Israel's three largest banks pay hundreds of millions in fines for helping U.S. citizens evade billions in taxes. This is the thing that Trump is supporting. Because he's sent by God to do so. Now, I don't know what your Bible says, and I don't know what your religious book says. I don't think that qualifies. For it. Now, we have somebody and some people in a, the government that have the power to kill everyone on the planet is really troubling as well. Are they that psychopathic? I don't know that they're not. I guess I have a little bit of faith in, in, in there's a constraint somewhere. Uh, but this is what the God, what God has sent on the world is this guy Trump to allow Israel to create banks to do money laundering, a lot of the Panama Papers and all this other stuff, right? Or organized criminal syndications. They're willing to go again genocide people over in Yemen. Uh, this guy sent by God is willing to go destroy a Persian people uh, when nothing happened to the Israeli Israel uh, the Jews there. In fact, there's twenty thousand more living there. Yes, they have political constraints, but they moved there from the middle e the Western Middle East and were received as immigrants. The Persians allow said come you know allowed them to stay to stay and they they were able to prosper in, in the in the bosom of persia if i can say it that way is not something to be used as an attack a reason to attack them again the story is so upside down and then to come out and say well all this story is actually sent by god has got to be the height of what folks demonic control i guess we got to go there at some level. There's no law rationale behind it. I mean, the the I told you this is it was, it was on the books even during Obama when they went to indefinite detention and throughout the international law. I told you the raps were off. It was done. These people are gone nuts, and now we're seeing it. And I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm. 
I don't think I'm going to have a problem with anything happening in my life. But there's people out there that are suffering and dying and, and wishing they could be dead. They're suffering so bad that the this man in the presidency of the United States sent by God is allowing. And so I don't, and I said that was happening. If he's going to do genocide against the people of Yemeni, uh, Yemen, and then he's going to allow war crimes against the producers of the United States of a government, well, I just don't know what kind of a what, what kind of a God would do that and send that kind of a guy to do that to people. And you look at no 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 peaceful God would do that. Maybe we don't live in that world. Remember, the world was given over to some entity, some thing for a time. Don't, let's not forget about that and look around us. Can we say different? I don't care what your beliefs are. I don't care what you condemn in the books and the history and all that other stuff. Look around you. So I keep look around you. What kind of a country do you live in where your cops come, your military come and shoot teachers uh, to tr to abuse them to be afraid of not responding to a terrorist? I understand the dynamic on that as well. You're going to throw your life out because you don't want to be shot by an airsoft gun because you were told you have to attack the attacker and they would provide you nothing and no no reason and, and no facilities and, and no society that thinks that's, that, that, that's no good and it won't happen no more. No, they go ahead and they foster and encourage this, notwithstanding that all these drills seem to be connected to these shootings. Again, it's the war of terror against you. And it's done by the government itself. Remember, the original definition of terrorism is a system of government that rules by fear, intimidation, and dread. It says by terror, but rules by terror. The word tem terror equals fear, intimidation, and dread. So it's a system of government, not people in, in bomb vests, not you or me. It's things like that are brought by God to go tear down a, a country somewhere else or its own people. For what reason is beyond me because I don't understand it. I don't get it. I have no reason to tell you about that. All I know is it's happening. And until that first teacher who was shot said, wait a minute, you don't have no right to do it. Luckily, it wasn't real bullets. But we had an accident. That was a real gun we used on that one. Until someone stopped being a cricket, nobody knew what was going on, and there was no step. These people were so corrupted. There was no steps prior to avoid it. And only under the scrutiny were they going to look at it, and then only half-heartedly. Is this problem now on a global scale? Remember, Israel's the, the place where all this technology come up for surveillance. It's all the it's the place that they're it's the hub of this new technology they're talking about, new economy coming up. It's the place where that they can fabricate your DNA. Why do these people do this? And remember, data is information. We're back to the mercurial aspect and dimension. And it's not in control of us. It, it's, well, it is control of us. It's not in our control. The information is not in our control. Well, anybody on, on social network sees that. But, it, no, but we're, beyond, we're beyond now. I'm talking a little beyond this, uh, actually before that. So Israel is, is this hub of, of, of um, destruction. And this, uh, this someone that believe the people around Trump that believe he's been sent by God to support this. And again, the, why would they want to fabricate DNA? And we heard, we heard I did a report behind a woodshed. Then we find out this little thing. Remember, DNA is an interesting natural data storage system. And mind to man, the mo monkey mind is pretty cool, pretty clever. Well, it's now come out that Microsoft is now demonstrating the first fully automated DNA storage, data storage. They take your DNA, they take a synthetic DNA, and they fold up a bunch of data inside this, this these uh, strands that are more compact than anything we've ever done in, in the world. They're, 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 the data storage looks more like a bio biology lab uh, setup. Research, researchers from Microsoft and the University of Washington have demonstrated the fully, first fully automatic d system to store and retrieve data in manufactured DNA. The key step in moving technology out of, res out of the research and into the labs, which is, a, uh, is for commercial data centers. Fascinating technology, but remember, I just said Israel, the same God sent man on earth to support this occupier in the world, bent on destroying 
by excuse anybody in its way. Uh, also fabricates DNA, your DNA. Now they're saying it's for data storage generally. And then this story pops up. Rwanda, the first to create a nation, nationwide DNA database. Remember, Rwanda was the place that I think they made that movie over where, what it, was it, the Tutsis got massacred? How fast do you think a regime like that would pick up a database like this and go looking for the people they want to get rid of? Do you think it might come from a nation that has the technology that already wants to commit genocide on Yemen, people of Yemen, the Persians, and the producers of the United States of America? Do you think maybe they'd be, have a proclivity to do something like this? Now, my thought about all this was, you know, maybe we could just hope and pray for the fact that the Microsoft database would be adulterated by the Israeli fabricated DNA somehow, or that that's how you would hack this database system in the future. Generation Z, you listening? Wouldn't that be interesting that their DNA database got crispered? And so they, re regimes and psychopaths like Rwanda's ruling class couldn't get a hold of this database that is more compact. They're saying like everything we know could be fit in some small cubes relative to how much information can be packed in the foldings of a DNA, which shows you how much, how, just how awesome nat the natural creation is. So the technology is coming. Take all this fabricated DNA and uh, store data in cloud, so-called, in someone's computer, all vulnerable. No one's going to check the vulnerability. This is your future, folks. And it's already happening. Look, at this is already happening. How much power is going to be in the hands of a few people? And they're going to, and I've been telling you, I've been promoting this AI. It's not, folks. It's just someone making up a, a math program. There's no intelligence. There's no, there's no cognition behind any of it. And yet it's going to be given the status of an expert. It'll be the best practices. It'll be the best science. And it's going to be run by psychopaths and people around psychopaths that believe that those people were put there by God. Does, that, does anybody get chills when I'm saying that? This is not my words. Pompeo said this about this guy, and then I went and looked at, this, at the condition that that someone else described and found, I found an error in that thing, but that exposed that error, and studying it exposed an even bigger vindictiveness. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just uh, chilling to some level. I guess maybe that's it. I just My jaw just locks up by freezing. It doesn't understand what to tell you. And we all sit as crickets to this thing. China says it's going to arrest 13,000 terrorists in Xinjiang. What do you think they do with these databases, folks? They're already doing it in China. They call you a terrorist. Those of you sovereign citizens out there, folks? Anybody who does any court filing that sounds anything off? Any resistance you have at all? You'd be called a terrorist? What, an enemy combatant? In what law? Well, the Patriot Act. Which law was that? It's the first law, one of the, one of the three laws the FBI will use against the state of Oregon, the institutions that take on the state of Oregon law to try and make an alternative banking system. Am I tying it back around, Frumpy? Did I come all the way around? It only took me an hour and a three quarter, hour and a half. See how this works, folks? It's all right there for us to read. And there's more, folks. I can't even tell you. Like I said, I, this Pompeo thing just shut me down. There's so much more I don't get so locked up with on these stories like the so-called terrorists in Xinjiang uh, and how they're dealing with them is coming to a DNA storage system near you. And remember, the people that run that are are the types that would agree that a man in an office is put there by God who turns around and causes genocide who's agreeable to that and to build it up and so, and then has all the minions to enforce it. Remember, Microsoft said that it'll do give all of its technology to the military. How am I doing, Solomon? Hope you're doing all right. You know, I, I say that, not to Solomon, I say that about the military all the time. I just say, you know, I, I'm, you people must think I'm nuts. I just must be some focused idiot. 
But there it is, folks, there, to see. You can try and change my mind. Uh, it's everywhere. And again, it's not unqualified everywhere. It's categories, it's prob probabilitized, it's sit sitting in some proof. There's a proof I can provide for about anything that I say, about any place. I don't know if I ever, no, I don't, it's, there's so much to think about, I just can't. I'm getting so backed up. I'm really getting refined. I'm finding out I just don't have the attention span, although my attention is 100%. The attention span to go off very far on all this stuff. I can't even hang on to a lot of it. I have to just hold on to the nubbins and then work my way back. Why? Because I have a foundation that allows me to work my way back. If so, it's, in other words, I can. It's like telling the truth. I don't have to remember the truth. I can just. I just know it. It doesn't help many people, but I at least can do the thing for me. So here we have. Uh, Rwanda would be love to go after the Tutsis again with the DNA database that Microsoft's going to hand them as a tool to the military. China's already calling people terrorists. 13,000 of them, folks. On somebody's whim, apparently. Some, somebody's too smart to be a cop. Someone who's paranoid in the government because someone doesn't like the way they're being mistreated, so they're going to come down harder with the jackboot, has now databases to identify you out, and there's nothing to stop the vulnerability. And I'm thinking even of a DNA database. Generation Z, you listen into CRISPR? You want to jump into that one? That would be a cool, interesting way to hack a database, wouldn't it? 2.3 million at risk of identity theft due to FEMA negligence. Talk about the military, talk about the databases, talk about information being available by the government itself, and here you are at risk, 2.3 million at risk of identity theft from FEMA due to these emergencies that you all think are, oh, they're coming for to help you. So if a military organization and national security uh, can't keep control, if you didn't hear it out of the, the audit that the Pentagon failed, this for you in the future and your Chinese apps that are going to tell you all about you and your social credit uh, in the United States or wherever, Britain or whatever, uh, that, I've been telling you, this data is vulnerable. There's no guarantee in any of these laws on how they're going to keep a, a vulnerability from it. Why? Because they can't. They can't do an impossibility in law. And yet they will blind themselves to this impossibility and put you at risk under the cover of, we're here to help you, we're from the government. Getting over to the idea of pretense, pretext, uh, the ideas of someone coming under with a big smile and a hearty handshake to stab you in the back once you commit. Maduro, United States withholding $5 billion in medical supplies in criminal measure. United States withholding $5 billion in medical supplies. Why would a country withhold $5 billion in medical supplies if it was coming with a smile and a benefice. Why do you do that to people? You're not hurting the government. You're hurting the people. Why does the United States, the same guy that's sent by God that will commit genocide under, under, under the, uh, on the Yemenis, that will set up to attack Iran, that will attack the producers in the United States of America, why do you think they'd pull back the medical supplies unless they are vicious demons. What pretense can you use now, given the being the United States government, when you overtly withhold aid, and your whole purpose for that was a setup program to provide the aid? What kind of a nasty, nasty creature are you? Remember, even in international law, they everybody recognizes this. Politics is different than business is different than humanita humanitarian, and I, I use the word human loosely, humanitarian aid. Even in international law, there's five jurisdictions of things you don't interfere with. Hospitals is one of them. Medical, science, museums, education. These are generally understood, but don't forget, the caucasocracy of the United States, the, the, the one with the man sent by God to be put in that position, wiped that all out. They no longer believe in all that. They believe everybody is an enemy combatant because they have the divine right of kings. Maybe even greater than the Pope here. 
Now, the Pope being silent on this, maybe they're getting their orders from there. But I, I don't have any thought about that more. The U.S. withholding $5 billion. What, what pretense can the United States use in the world anymore? It's a medical weapon, folks. This is the whole thing. It's a world military operation. It boggles my mind, but there it is. I, I don't really know of any man that's able to do this. Any woman, man or woman, that's able to pull this together. So this must be a higher spiritual type thing going on, and I suspect highly that it, that it is. I touched a little bit earlier about it, but we're going to just leave it right there because most people want to get into the arguments over it. Now, my point is you either recognize it or you don't. This either goes in good or it goes in bad, and you, you just, there's no choice to make. The choice is which way will you agree to go because you're we you agree with one because you're crickets and you, you'll agree with the other one that the, the one that's no good because you're not going to be other than crickets. The the medical war against you is on. This is a proof they're going to withhold to people who need it five billion dollars in medical aid to Venezuela. There's a big deal going on. Whoa, wait a minute. What is that? Oh, it's interesting coincident interestingly coincident with the uh, the supply of oil, isn't it? And let's not forget the connection with the fiat that I told you, if you go look in your states that have done it uh, in Arizona, I think it was Arizona and another state, and now I think the opportunity in Oregon exists, and you can do it everywhere else, especially with the cannabis, because it's the need, the pressure is there now to cause the forcing back to normalcy of, 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 of the uh, minting of coins or the use of coins for lawful money. The you have the opportunity in this strife in order to bring back the semblance of a, of a rationale that works, that's separate from these global systems. And when you don't, you're susceptible to them or the presumption of the susceptibility. Medical war against you. UPS to send nurses for in-home vaccinations. It's not good enough, folks, that you're, <laughs> that you're not showing up. They're going to send a UPS uh, contractor to, to give you your, your vaccination. Fascinating what these people, these businesses will do. All for the buck. The problem right now is they haven't figured out how the, uh, how the, the insurance companies are going to pay for it. Remember, that gets us back into Obama's scare and now Trump's scare and all this other stuff. There's no excuse now to not have your uh, vaccination, folks. And so before you go thinking that's a good thing, or they're going to ring it right to your door and the insurance is going to pay for it. What insurance, folks? Most people, 29 hours a week, can't afford it, right? You're going to get that one that they get. The death, the death squad are going to tell you whether you need that vaccination. And no, you're at risk. We're not going to give that to you even if it worked. And there are some that work. And there's some ways that you can take them that they work. And there's some ways that they're there that are not as poisonous and not toxic at all, actually. There's a whole range of them. And you just happen to get the cheapest ones. The covert medical, chemical warfare, John Rappaport, is now speaking in the concept of this war against us uh, in the dimension of medical help and care. And my condolences to John Rappaport, his wife, wife, if you know of him or know him, and didn't know his wife just passed passed away. He was have he's uh, you know contemplative of the loss and so and big, took a big wind out of his sail for sure. A covert chemical warfare, John Rapport says, $100,000 deaths a year. Now, this is the licensing of the government uh, on the agents inside the government to cause 100,000 100, deaths a year through uh, medical uh, drugs. 4.02 billion prescriptions for drugs in America in 2011. 4.02 billion prescriptions. It doesn't count the tablets. That's just the prescriptions. This country only has, what, 320-some-odd million? That's more prescriptions, I think, what, than there is in China, the people in China, isn't it? At any rate, it doesn't matter. Way overprescribed, way big business here, big industry. But he sees it as a covert chemical warfare. How long have I been telling you that, folks? UPS is going to set up to try and get, make sure you get your vaccines delivered. They're not going to do it. I wondered about the, I'm still worried about their liability, but they're going to contract to a private nurse to come out to give you the injection. It's all going to be set up. 
And so what is the chemical, the covert chemical warfare, what about the implied biological warfare, folks, inside that? Remember, these pharmaceuticals are created by genetically modified organisms that create chemistry that they then put in your, in your medicines and your food. It's said that those, organi those substances are not GMO themselves. And I have to agree at the point of some of the chemical chemistry that's made that are additives. However, there's this uh, bio-integration that doesn't happen when they synthesize this stuff that I do have a sense, if I don't have a scientific proof for you, in my practice through this stuff and doing it all these years, uh, there's a, there is a bio-integration with the substances that are natural. Uh, it won't get that out of any doctor, but it doesn't matter. I'm not, when I, I'm making decisions for me, I'm not working on someone else's brain or the lack of it. Scientists... Uh, okay, so the, the genetic modification of all these causes what we were talking these unintended consequences, all the stuff I talk about, uh, the probably part of what you see in the data sheets for all these pharmaceuticals, the vaccines that say you got side effects, uh, they won't test all that, they just say they exist. And then we get this coming out. Remember those uh, genetically altered babies in China? Well, okay, you're going to go arrest 13,000 terrorists, and then they're also going to make some babies that they don't, Hopefully, they, they can make them so they're not sick, not in the sick in the future, and they're, they're less terroristic. Scientists from around the world call for immediate halt to genetically altered children. My uh, horror about this was they call for the immediate halt, but it's only a moratorium. I told you once the genie was out of the bottle on this, it would not stop. A moratorium means it's going to be giving them some uh, uh, cool-down time, and then it's going to go on. And they're going to make their basic rules because they're, they're terrified of what can be unleashed here. Uh, but these scientists come out of around the world to call for a halt. But genetically altered children as a moratorium should terrify you. Genetically modified people are on the way, folks. Uh, again, this is one of those things. There's, they got five different headings that they want to look at. The first two, one of them is technical, and the other one is scientific, should terrorize you. It means that the scientific side has questions, and the application of that science, the technical side, has questions that are non unanswered at this point, which is what you're already using in the pharmaceuticals and the, side of, and the additives in your food. They are telling us in this report, the scientists are saying, we've got to halt the genetically alter our children because our science and technology and gene technology on science and technological levels is not understood. Did I pause long enough? Do I waste a lot of air time there? Do you get it, folks? They're just asking for a moratorium to work this out for themselves so they can feel better about what they're doing to everybody. Now, you can go ahead and keep buying into all this stuff, or you can step up, stop being crooked, step up, and just send the simplest letter to interfere with this nonsense. And I tell you, your APA, your Administrative Procedures Act, in other states, both for the federal and for the state, is a good start. For those of you who just want to sit down and write a simple letter, take a few characters out of the chat room. For over, take those characters and reorganize them just a little bit in a proper sentence on a subject matter you really want to see stopped or work towards stopping so that everybody can see that you're, that's your subject matter. Maybe others can come to your aid and at least put your foundation down against something. Scientists find evidence that your brain can sense Earth's magnetic field. Well, that's kind of late in the game to find out what we might be doing with our technology, you think, and saying it's okay. What I'm speaking to now is not the capacity, because I think that's kind of known to anybody that's sensitive to themselves in responding to things uh, in the world. I mean, I'll go a little bit esoteric. I don't know if anybody has ever felt this or they can identify it, but you talk about those power lines in the earth or those ley lines or these uh, moving lines, powers in the earth. You can feel those if you're sensitive to it. You can look in the forest and watch where permanent ones are as you watch the forest grow. And if you didn't know that, I've done it the reverse, walked through one of these field areas and said, wow, there's something going on here. And look around me and all of a sudden notice, because I wasn't really paying attention, wow, there's an energy field in these areas going in these directions. They actually have a direction. So about the, that they find you can sense things in your brain, magnetic fields. Uh, okay, fine, that, that should have been, in a way, knowledge. But let's add a little more thing. If they are materials in the, the brain that are magnetically sensitive to fields, and they electromagnetic fields are what can excite them, do you think you might have a problem when they start energizing fields around you, like from 5G? 
or maybe even in your phones right now or your wireless and all this other stuff, do you think maybe those areas are getting a concentration or a, d a dimin diminution of energy and focusing it elsewhere? If you want to see that and you want to ruin a CRT because you don't know how to degauss it, you take an old CRT and get a ring magnet or any magnet and stick it up to the screen if you want to ruin it. If you know how, how you're doing it, you can unpaint it. If you know how to degauss it right, you can unpaint it so that it goes back to normal if you haven't have a too strong a magnet. But when you put a magnet, consider this a small piece of magnetite in your brain, nano size, it will form a field. It'll form a, fra a, a distortion in the field. You can kind of see the magnetic effect uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of um, beams on, your, on a TV, a normal TV screen. Don't do it to your TV screen. You'll ruin it unless you know what you're doing. But that'll show you that a piece of magnet will adjust beams of energy. And so this little story was very interesting. They're making chemistry and chemicals and technology, and they're just finding out that the, even a, ma a human, so a, a monkey brain, the man and woman's brain has these abilities to check magnetic fields, and they do it by particles that are sensitive. I want you to consider, if they didn't know that, did they, did they ever test to find out whether or not our energy fields that we create artificially are interfering with anything in our biology processes, let alone our orientation to our nature. And maybe, let's look a little farther, do you think that has a warping effect on our perception? I think that's a good thing to go look at, and I think there's a high possibility that it is. And so, if nothing else, I know it's not being studied, for those of you that are doing the 5G and, and the medicines and all this, here's one more thing that scientists, experts said they didn't know about that appears to have some very profound interference problems, uh, the interference of which the problems would be uh, to, to, or re, uh, to change and alter any parameter in the brain, whether that's a chemical, a time, a sequence, a speed, a sense, a desense, anything. We, don't, we just don't know, folks, is the point I guess I'm getting at. For the wonder that it is, it should be given us a self-evident proof that we don't know. But so you see how the agencies aren't told... They just go down where the fastest money is or the fastest regulation can be. And so you're getting medicines that come out and who knows what they're affecting. You know, remember we had the, the theory of the mi uh, migration of the what uh, aluminum there is in an injection. You, you realize that you take a, you can, you can get an inducted field in a non-ferrous material. And so if it, these little pieces of magnetite are there, and they do that. What do you think an inducted field in a non-ferrous material would be in the brain? Is this a fact we don't know about? They're just finding out this is there. That we, oh, well, well, and some people who look left or right, if they look left, they can see it. And they look right, they can't. So there's only some people that it, it, it does. Now, that talks to me about genetic predisposition and the failures of the, any of this stuff, any of these pharmaceuticals, any of the decisions that are made on certain people. Any one of you could be that certain one. Again, it takes more to think about this stuff and not run so fast with some of these things that uh, that profit, that even good intention people, you know, ignorant good intention people can be pretty dangerous, let alone someone who's sent by God to destroy whatever his gaze puts on that, if, that insults him. Terrorizing. Terrorizing. And then we have this other new little thing, kind of neat. Maybe we don't have to get so sophisticated. Science can do some things in the right way. Maybe we don't need things like genetically modified antibiotics that cause superbugs because the nature's tougher. The, the nature's tougher than man is, is intelligent. Uh, how the healing power of Irish soil may help fight superbugs. Okay, so mine, the people, scientists didn't realize that we have a magnetic sense about us. Uh, I extrapolate that a little bit to say, well, if it can do that and those things are there, it's part of the system of things, whether we totally understand it. And there's other things that are being injected into us or we're taking in the body that can be, go, that pass through the blood brain, brain barrier that can be uh, either directly the similar similarity, but difference in concentration and purpose, or artificially created to be inter interactive by those very same systems that our science doesn't even look at 
that when we go look at nature, we might have, like I said, you look, if you have this sense about this and you walk through the forest or you walk anywhere, it is kind of tougher to do it in the city, as a matter of fact. But you can go through a forest after a moment of time, a half a day or so. Uh, you, you can sense the fields in the, in the, in the, in the uh, forest, and you can sense the energy in things. And I know it sounds kind of bizarre to most some people here, but it, in fact, is there. Uh, whether anybody will believe it or not, I, um, it, it actually trips, trips me out uh, to be able, like I said, just absently go trumpsing through a forest somewhere and then realizing I'm, I'm sensing something and look around and find the evidence of it in the, in the nature. Uh, nature responds to all this stuff. Well, nature responds to, to it, it's, it's nature. Like we were talking earlier, NEPA actually, and thank you, uh, and well, then for, for creating, uh, for showing this, that man is not part of nature in the NEPA either. He ought to be, but he's not. Well, there's a reason for that, and, I, and there's a good reason for it, uh, it, it, in the point of the regulation for why the regulations are. But, but in fact, we are we are a part of the nature, and we've all uh, modified or adapted as we've all come along from a, I think, more of a creative place. I don't believe there's no. I just can't see the proof for the evolution part. I can see it for adaptation, like Darwin said. Actually, not what was contorted. But we've all come along, and we've been here and interacting in ways that we may not have been aware of, like, let's say, the fungus in the world under our feet. We are integrated with that whole this, that whole biome. Uh, but at any rate, uh, now we find out how the healing power of Irish soil may help fight superbugs. There's a little critter in, in, in uh, beastie in, in Irish soil uh, that they've now identified, and it's a, a certain uh, type of, of, of beastie, that bacteria, that actually is able to fight even and has defenses and and, uh, and attacking modes to even interfere with the genetically modified and adapted against our medicines in Ireland which poses a that which they, they're going to now they didn't know it was there now they find it's there they're going to try and, and and build this into a, a, a treatment uh, that I don't know if it's good or bad because then I think there's going to come up with worse antibiotics but that nature has this ability to adapt. No different than the superbug got developed. Nature has in it some places that we don't know, and why we really should take care of the the place that the nat the place that we live in has a natural bacteria that can fight something that man creates. That's no good, and it's just us being aware to it. And this is the kind of thing I say. You know, if we're focused on so-called the political climate change. We may not understand the dynamics of the real climate change. And if we go after the political one, and it's the wrong answer, it could be the right answer by accident. But if it's the wrong answer, we're going to do things not only to harm us, but harm our future generations and, and the whole environment. And this is the problem of the genetic, uh, the genetic uh, wild, uh, wilding of, of man-made genetics. And so we really do have some things to look at. But we don't necessarily have to run too far from nature itself first. Apparently it's more profitable to be like monkeys and, and, and like trying to write the manuscript, a Shakespeare's manuscript. I guess we get 100 monkeys working, eventually in 100 years we'll get what we need. That apparently is, is more efficient. But nature has been working at this for a long time. And if we just pay attention, maybe we can find some of the stuff that we need. Uh, and apparently these are healthy soils that are actually part of a folk remedy. And folk medicine, so it's an understood in the people local to that area. Whether it's elsewhere, I don't know. That's not my point here. The point was that nature uh, does still offer some help to us, even for as stupid as man will be, or as, as privateering and profiteering as it, it wants to be. Nature still has another 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 thing to say. Uh, and so, going back to the fact of the military crime against us, the medical crime against us that we see. They're they're willing to withhold medical care if it'll get these cockistocracy premiers what they want. Uh, we also see nations coming into the fold to help impose these problems. And uh, this was a story that came up a couple of weeks ago. No vaccine, no school in Italy. Not much different than California. See, this is all global. Uh, they push these vaccines again. We're back to the vaccine issue. Uh, they say no vaccine, no no uh, no school. Well, what did we just say? We just found out that they're no good. We just found out what uh, Robert Kennedy was just up uh, talking about how big pharma completely owns Congress, and then he came up last night in a, in a Twitter thing. Uh, he talks about talking about the the uh, condition where 
He uh, says uh, Merck lied about this vaccine. He deceived regulators and the public. There's no proof the vaccine solves cervical cancer. There's an indication the vaccine itself actually gives you cancer. And then he says, I'm saying it this way because I want Merck to sue me. But they won't. So Italy, now you listen to that, and Italy has said, you don't take these vaccines, you're not coming to school. We're not going to give you the benefit in education. And what, what was also Robert Kennedy talking about, but that other thing I talked to you about a long while back, about that uh, Corvelva, and they were talking about there was 65 toxins in a vaccine with no antigen to do anything that helped. This is kind of what he's talking about here. This was, I think, I think a GlaxoSmithKline, the Infrix, Hexa, 65 toxins are found. Vaccine gate, initial results of Infrix, Hexa chemical compositions. And, and a, a country like Italy wants to make it mandatory for you to get these uh, poisons. Can't be any different than... In Italy, no doubt, where the Vatican is supposedly here with the supposed to be, you know, Christian-like. They want their people to be harmed. Has to be a war against people. Automated by UPS. In the United States of America. See, I'm going to hang that out there for you all. See, this is coming to, to, a, to a freight carrier near you, contracting with the medical profession in order to inject people for a buck. Vaccines are being shown, being shown now. It took a long time. The regulators are involved in it, and they continue to allow it. No different in my mind than the caucus, the head of the top of the caucusocracy. These people must believe that they are put there by God. And they're willing to commit genocide. And they're willing to harm people short of that. And they really don't care beyond that because they're justified. Doesn't sound much different than the, than the Catholic Church either. And the abuse that they put out. And the same climate change that they want to support. And the same sustainable debt and obligation to centralized systems that they want. That if you don't, start to voice this a lot better than just a complaint in the mechanisms that they've allowed to us. The future is going to be run by these that believe that the divine right of, of those in power. And they're not their standards are not your standards. And at some point you're going to have nothing to be able to say against it at all. We still have a chance. If But we're also out of practice. That's why you start with something simple is what I ask you. Just find something that's that doesn't quite fit with your right. Stop complaining about it and start working against it. Now, it'll take a little while, but that's you learning the process and someone learning about what they have to learn about because it's gone off the rail because even the people in decisions don't quite understand this dynamic. And yet it's as answerable as I've been explaining. And some things take a little more complicated approach and some not. And that all depends on what your awareness is uh, to a certain thing. And again, I don't... How can you... How can we not be shocked when the people around the head of the caucusocracy believe that God dropped someone into a political office? When they commingle politics and things, religion, which is, that means no difference, but then it's also incorrect in the spiritual to play. That's the serious one. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said to give you something to think about, give you something to respond to, give you something to do, folks. Don't just sit around. Don't just chat. Just Write the right things. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, thank you, uh, Jules. UCY.tv are still streaming that uh, syndication there. And anybody else is doing the post uh, production and things on your uh, YouTube's definitely appreciate all that. Uh, and uh, shares and likes. I don't get any of the, I don't get any of those, but I, I understand they're important. Apparently, they're not. Uh, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
but that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 